Hello everyone. Welcome to this module on writing essentials. In this series of sentences, this is the second lecture. In this lecture, we are going to look at two aspects. That is, what is the meaning of a sentence? And what are the common mistakes that students of English as second language learning make while constructing sentences. So in a sense, we're going to look at what are sentences and what are not sentences. To begin with, let's do an activity. Let's translate this sentence into Telugu. I went to college yesterday. The sentence would come into Telugu as Nenu Ninna College Ki Vellanu. Now let's do one other thing. Now let us translate back this sentence of Telugu into English again. I yesterday to college went or I yesterday college went. Now what do you observe? The first thing that comes to our notice is that the translation from Telugu to English literally may not convey the proper meaning of what we want to say. It can modify or it can also change the meaning of the sentence. In a way, we understand that the word order in a sentence is very crucial to what we want to communicate in English. Now, this is one of the problems that a student from a Telugu medium background or with the mother tongue of Telugu faces when he writes sentences in English. Since we naturally tend to think in a native language and then write the same into English, these mistakes can happen. So let's try to understand a bit more of why writing in English can be a difficult aspect to the students from other than English as native or mother tongue face. Now when we compare English with our other Indian languages, there are some differences the way we do write or we go about writing in English. The first thing that we come across is that English words do not have a lot of different endings for number or gender. Whereas many Indian languages have different endings for number or even gender. For example, in Hindi, we have uh, gender appropriated to many common nouns. For example, moon or chand or chandrama can have different gender. Whereas in English, the moon doesn't have a gender, it is neuter. So things like this can really pose a problem for a, a, for a learner from these other Indian languages. The second thing that is very important is the word order in English. So English, in English, the word order of a sentence is something like the subject, the verb and the object if there is any otherwise it's the subject followed by the verb for example the sentence the woman loved the man which means that she loved him but if we rearrange the words in the sentence and write it something like the man loved the woman the whole meaning of the sentences sentence changes 
it means he loved her so uh, in the first case it was she who loved him not he and in the second case it is he who loved her not she so the word word order when we are writing in english may be one of the important aspects to be checked uh, or edited by an english as a second language learner one more aspect of english which really poses problems for an esl student is the verb phrase in english the verb phrase can have a very complex structure the verb phrase uh, is a mixture or can be just simply the verb or a mixture of main verbs and helping verbs sometimes even the modal verbs it does really face a problem because i climbed up the ladder means that he climbed in the past whereas i was climbing the mountain could mean that this action was happening in the past so this this thing of verb phrase showing not only tense but also aspect if an action is completed or not or modality or even voice can fo can pose a lot of uh, problems for an esl student of course we also have many idioms with prepositions for example take off your shoes and the plane took off now prepositions when joined with the verb can change uh, the meaning of that verb these are also called as phrasal verbs a take off could mean remove whereas took off or take off can also mean can also have an idiomatic usage which means leave the ground so these are some areas of difficulties for an esl learner okay so let's now try to understand get back to our main concept of what is a sentence now a sentence is a group of words but then it also expresses a complete thought in other words a sentence is the unit of thought in english language so it is a group of words but necessarily it is expressing a complete thought so as we looked at it in the previous video a sentence can and should have a subject and a verb and it can express a complete thought okay now let's look at the different parts of a sentence now every sentence has two essential parts generally one is called as the subject and the other part is called the predicate now the subject of a sentence is the part about which something is being said so this is the main part of a sentence for example the flower bloomed here the subject is the flower the whole sentence is talking about the flower it is that part of the sentence about which something is being said the flower is blooming balu painted the most important part of this sentence is the subject balu the girls on the team were all good students the girls on the team is the subject you can observe here carefully that a subject can be one word or a, a, a group of words mainly it's always the noun phrase now what's a predicate now the predicate of a sentence is the part which says something about the subject so the predicate is generally talking about the subject it is that part of a sentence which is pointing to words the subject sohan told everyone 
about the accident. Who told? It was Sohan who told. So to Sohan told everyone about the accident. Now Sohan is the subject and told everyone about the accident is the predicate. Manoj sobbed. Sobbing is the activity which was being done by Manoj. Sam plays the piano well. Sam is doing something. And what is Sam doing? He's playing the piano well. So the predicate is that part which actually says something about the subject. And you, you, you would have observed that the predicate, the most important part of a predicate is the verb. Told, so untold. Manoj sobbed. Sam plays. Though it can have some other words after that, but the most important component which makes up the predicate is the verb. Sometimes it can only have a verb. The predicate can consist of only the verb and at other times it can consist of the verb as well as the prepositional phrases or the adverbial phrases. Right. Now, as, a, as we have already mentioned, that a subject can be simple or it can also consist of many words. Right. A simple subject is the main, main word in the complete subject. The four new students arrived early. In this sentence, the subject is, the complete subject is the four new students. Whereas the simple subject is students. That means the main word in the subject is students. The other words, the four new, are actually giving additional information about the simple subject, that is the students. So the complete subject is the main word with all its modifiers, like articles or possessives or demonstratives or other pronouns. So the four new students is the complete subject in this case. Now, the simple predicate or the verb is the main word or group of words in the complete predicate. So just like a subject can be simple and complete, similarly, the predicate the most important part of a predicate is the verb. Sarah's sister took us bowling yesterday. In this sentence, the complete predicate is took us bowling yesterday. And the simple predicate is always the verb took. So, so the complete predicate is the verb and all of its modifiers that they can be the complete ver uh, the verb along with its adverb or any adjectival phrases or it can also be a prepositional phrase. Okay, so now we have understood that the two main parts of a sentence are the subject and the predicate. And the phrases that can be part of a subject are the noun phrases, of course, along with the noun phrase, sometimes an adjective phrase. The four new students arrived early. And here the noun phrase is the four new students. Similarly, the predicate, the main part of a predicate is the verb phrase. And then it can be accompanied by, or can additionally, it can be accompanied by adverb prepositional or non phrases. Right. Now let's do an activity. Let us identify the simple and complete subjects in these following sentences. My severe stomach ache seemed better at the doctor's office. What do you think is the main or the simple subject in this sentence? Yes, it is the stomach ache. Whereas the complete subject is 
my severe stomach ache now let's look at the second sentence our new mail carrier slipped on the floor this morning what's the simple subject carrier or mail carrier carrier and the complete subject is our new mail carrier so the complete subject is the combination of the noun phrase along with all of its modifiers the longest dreariest road lies in the himalayan mountains what is the simple subject here road and the complete subject the longest dreariest road that's right so the simple and identifying the simple and the com complete subjects is one of the important aspects of trying to understand about whom the sentence is actually being in being said something okay now let's do another activity let's try to identify the simple and complete predicates in the sentences the purple curtain ripped at the seams yes the purple curtain is the subject ripped at the seams is the complete predicate and the simple predicate that is the verb is ripped our president always buys some of our competitors products now the complete predicate is always buys some of our competitors products and the simple predicate which is the verb is buys dotted print backgrounds are difficult to read the complete predicate is are difficult to read and the simple predicate is are which is the verb here okay so we have now understood what is a sentence so up to now what we have come up with is a group of words with a subject and a finite verb and a complete with a complete thought when we say finite verb we mean that it changes according to tense and it also changes according to number or gender so a group of words with a subject and a verb and a complete thought is a sentence so this is what a sentence means now let's look at some examples tom kicked the ball in this sentence we find just one clause tom kicked the ball and it's an independent clause tom kicked the ball into the net we find a clause and of course some phrases into the net running along the line tom kicked the ball at first look it seems that we have two verbs here but actually only one of them is a finite verb that is kicked it is telling us about the tense or the time whereas running in the previous phrase of the sentence is actually a present participle which does not talk about the tense it is a non finite verb here it is acting like an adjective running along the line the total phrase is acting like an adjective and talk telling us something about tom who was running along the line tom was running along the line so here what we find is we find one clause that is tom kicked the ball and the other phrase is consisting of some non finite verb now tom kicked the ball and it hit the net in this case of a sentence we have two clauses tom kicked the ball it hit the net and both of them are independent clauses that means they can stand on their own they have a subject they have a verb and they also have a complete meaning and they both are actually joined together by a conjunction and and now they are combined to form one single sentence tom kicked the ball and it hit the net so this is one sentence but having two clauses right up to now we have tried to understand what is a sentence now let's just try to understand also what is not a sentence so we have 
come to the definition that a sentence should have a subject, a finite verb, and a complete thought. So, let's observe these following lines and identify them if they are sentences, if they are proper sentences. Now look at these sentences. The class was ready for the next step according to the teacher. If I left an hour later than normal, the next train will be arriving five minutes, five minutes from now. William gazed across the broad Pacific. His heart was filled with dread. What do you think? Are these sentences proper sentences? Generally, this is the way many ESL students form their sentences. But if we carefully observe in the first sentence, the first part, actually it is the two sentences written there. And the first part of it is a proper sentence. The class was ready for the next step. Subject, verb and a thought. But in the second case, according to the teacher, here, though we have the subject teacher, we do not have a finite verb. Hence, it is not a sentence. Now, let's come to the second part, second sentence. If I left an R later than normal, here we do have a subject I and we do also have a verb left. But then if you really read the sentence, if I left an R later than normal, it doesn't convey us a complete thought. It seems something is still missing. So it is not a proper sentence because a thought is missing. Now let's look at the third example. The next train will be arriving five minutes from now. When we look at the first part of this sentence, the next train will be arriving. It does have a subject and a verb will be arriving. And it's a, it does seem to have a complete thought. But the next part, five minutes from now, we neither have a subject nor a verb or nor a complete thought. So such sentences which either miss a subject or a verb or a thought are called as sentence fragments. Now let's look at the fourth example. William gazed across the broad Pacific. His heart was filled with dread. Now here what we find is we have a subject William and the verb gazed. And as we go on look at the sentence, we find that there is another subject heart, his heart and the verb was filled. Now we find that in just one sentence, we are having two subjects and two finite verbs without any demarcation. So in the previous sentence, we either missed a subject or a verb or a complete thought. And in this case, we are having actually more than required number of verbs and subjects. And both of these cases are not proper sentences. And these lines do not completely satisfy the conditions of being a sentence. What are the conditions? As we have written in the beginning itself, a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. So they either they are fragmentary in nature or they are fused, made too many fused into one. So these are the two areas of errors big areas of errors that ESL learners generally make, especially Indian ESL learners. One is the sentence fragments, where we either miss a subject or a verb or the thought. And the second is the run-on sentences, where we take two sentences and then fuse them together unnecessarily giving uh, a wrong idea when we read the sentence. Okay, now let's come to the first case that is the sentence fragments. Fragments. Now this is one area of errors committed by the students. Now, how can we rectify this error? 
Now we are going to look at how to rectify that. Now, what can be sentence fragments? Now we can use phrases. Sometimes we write phrases as sentences and that leads us to an error. Look at these two sentences. The class was ready for the next step according to the teacher. Now according to the teacher is actually a phrase and because we are writing it separately as a sentence it is creating a fragment. Watching the sky the people saw the air show. Now here we have a phrase watching the sky which doesn't have the subject or the verb actually and because we are writing it separately what we are doing is we are creating a sentence fragment. Now how can we rectify this? Now, in order to rectify sentence fragments, where we are writing phrases as fragments, uh, we can combine the two sets of words in each pair and to make up a complete sentence. We can just add them up together, join them to form one single sentence. Sometimes uh, a new word pair is required, but many times just a comma is needed. So, Look at the first sentence. We can write the same thing in this way. According to the teacher, the class was ready for the next step. All we had done was just rearrange the order of the words, take according to the teacher at the beginning and put a comma and add the next sentence and now we have a complete sentence. According to the teacher is a phrase and the sentence consists of the subject class and also the verb was and it now gives us a complete thought. Similarly, watching the sky, the people saw the air show or the picnickers saw, saw the air show. So we can rectify phrases when we write phrases as individual sentences by actually joining them to the sentence before or after that, combining them with the two sets of words, sets of words, and then making one complete sentence. Another case of sentence fragments that is generally done is writing dependent clauses. Now, dependent clause means uh, a group of words with a subject and a verb, but then their meaning is incomplete or it doesn't convey one complete thought. Now, if you observe these two sentences at the beginning, before we went on to the next project or whenever this company changes its policies, now actually these two are dependent clauses. Though they have subject and verb, the thought is not complete yet. They're actually wanting to be waiting to be completed. So sometimes ESL learners can write these sort of clauses and make them as sentences. And they're actually not proper sentences. Now, let's look at the second case. I left an hour later than normal. In this case, you have I, a subject, left a verb, and the whole, uh, the whole predicate gives us a complete meaning. So it's an independent clause, basically and we can call it as a sentence. So independent clauses are sentences. They have subjects, verbs, and complete meanings. Whereas if I left an hour later than normal, though it has a subject and a verb, it still doesn't have a complete meaning. So it's a fragment. It's not, it's not a full sentence. It's only a part. Similarly, our group finished its project. It's an independent clause and a sentence. When our group finished its report, actually it's a dependent clause, so it's a fragment. So one thing ESL learners need to remember is never let a dependent clause by itself because that is only a fragment and not a complete sentence. So how can we rectify this? We can rectify this by actually adding the the in another independent clause to the dependent clause. So we have to give 
uh, independent clause to a dependent clause in order to make it as a complete sentence. When our group finished its report, we went for lunch. So we are have to we have to provide an independent clause to the dependent clause so that it makes up a complete sentence. So this is how we rectify. If you have written a dependent clause as a sentence itself, the thing you need to do is provide a little clause, an independent clause, so that it now becomes a complete sentence and join it with the dependent clause. Okay, now one other way of fragments are written is by separating them. The fans drove all over the downtown area and looked for a parking spot. And actually, actually, it's a complete, it has to be joined as one sentence. But generally, sometimes uh, ESL learners tend to do, what they tend to do is just cut this one big sentence and write them as fragments. Faulty equipment and poor workmanship, they refuse to pay the bill in full. Now, faulty equipment and poor workmanship is a fragment. Similarly, in the first case, and looked for a parking spot is a fragment. How to rectify them? We, are, we only need to join them up together and use the proper conjunction. The fans drove all over the downtown area and looked for a parking spot. They refused to pay the bill in full because of faulty equipment and poor workmanship. So sometimes we can just add words or sometimes we can just combine them uh, using a comma and, and uh, make them into a complete sentences. In the second case, we have given a conjunction because of so that it makes up, it joins the two parts together and makes up one complete sentence. Now, after looking at the different ways in which we construct fragments and assume them to be sentences, let's try to identify if these sentences are fragments or sentences across the street. There is a subject, but no verb and no complete thought, probably a fragment. Stringing her new tennis racket. You have a subject, new tennis racket, but then you don't have a verb because stringing here is present participle, which is, which is acting like an adjective, but not a verb, finite verb. And moreover, it doesn't have a complete thought. So a fragment. A small studio with a view of the park. Okay, a small studio is the subject, but we don't have a verb here. So it's a fragment. Arun received the highest grade on the math final. Arun is the subject. Received is the verb. And you also find that the whole thing has a complete thought. So this is a sentence. Although it had already started to rain, it is the subject. Started, had started the verb but then you don't have the complete meaning or thought hence it is a fragment yes now once you really observe or identify that these are fragments and this is a sentence now you have an you now get an idea about when you are writing either you're writing a fragment or a sentence so we need to take care that we do not write fragments because they are not sentences at all Okay, now let's come to the second big area where we commit mistakes, that is the run-on sentences or the fused sentences. What we do in a run-on sentence is actually we take up two independent clauses and then we put them as one sentence. Uh, nothing wrong in actually combining sentences, but they have to be separated by proper punctuation or uh, proper conjunctions. So, in a few sentence, in a fused sentence, what we generally do is we miss out on the punctuation or we miss out on the conjunction. And naturally, the sentence doesn't give us the right meaning. Lisa moved to the suburbs. She still keep, kept in touch with her friends in the city. Now, there is, you, ha, you wanted to write it into one big sentence. Nothing wrong in that. But because we have not used punctuation, or we have not used conjunction in this sentence it doesn't really convey 
it doesn't really convey what is intended of it. Lisa moved to the suburbs. She still kept in touch with her friends in the city. My paycheck this week is more than I thought it would be. Now I can buy the computer. I have been waiting. Although we have too many subjects and too many verbs in this without any division of them by using punctuation or coordinate uh, conjunctions. So how can we rectify? Now the simple way to rectify a run on sentence is breaking it up into simple sentences. There is no need to write long sentences just to, just to um, convey something. Simple sentences can do it also. And of course, we can use commas or semicolons in order to separate the two clauses. Or even we can use conjunctions to separate two clauses um, when we are writing to make it into a proper sentence. So run-on sentences are like, not like, unlike fragments where you, you don't have a subject or a verb. Here what we have is we have more than required number of subjects and verbs. Okay, there are three ways we can just um, rectify a run-on sentence by adding a full stop and a capital letter making two simple sentences. So breaking up a sentence into two different parts, we can make, we can actually divide a run on sentence and make two proper sentences. Lisa moved to the suburbs, full stop. She still kept in touch with her friends in the city. Absolutely fine, two sentences. Now we can also actually rectify it by adding a comma and a conjunction like and, but, or, for, not, yet, so. So Lisa moved to the suburbs, comma, but she still kept in touch with her friends. So we are using a comma and a conjunction. And now it becomes one big, one big sentence. Or we can also use another punctuation that is semicolon to divide two clauses. Lisa moved to the suburbs, semicolon, she still kept in touch with her friends in the city. Now this is one sentence. Or we can also turn one of the independent clauses into a dependent clause. Although she moved to the suburbs, comma, Lisa still kept in touch with her friends in the city. So these are the many ways that we can rectify a run-on sentence and make it a sentence. Okay, now let's do an exercise. Let's correct these sentences. All of these are run-on sentences. Shweta delivered the package. It arrived a day ahead of schedule. Raghu was running late, the traffic was unusually heavy. The electricians finished on time, however, they overspent their budget. You will need to reorganize these files, otherwise we will never be able to find anything. Brinda needed some advice, she was at the end of her rope. Okay, now, look at, and you can use any of those four aspects or four ways to uh, modify or rectify a run-on sentence. I'm using two of them. Now, Sveta delivered the package, full stop, it arrived a day ahead of schedule. Now, I've just broken down the big sentence into two small, simple sentences. Or, Sveta delivered the package, semicolon, it arrived a day ahead of schedule. Now, you can clearly observe that the word it in the first one starts with a capital I, but in the second one, it does not, which means that in the first one, it is an another sentence or a second sentence whereas in the second sentence it's just part of one big sentence similarly Raghu was running late full stop the traffic was unusually heavy or you can write Raghu was running late semicolon the traffic was unusually heavy the electricians finished on time however semicolon after that however and comma they overspent their budget that's one sentence. Electricians finished on time, full stop. However, comma, they overspent. Similarly, you'll need to reorganize these files. Otherwise, you'll never be able to find anything. You will need to reorganize these files, semicolon. Otherwise, comma, will never be able to find anything. Or you can just break them up into two sentences. Similarly, the last one. You can break them up. Brinda needed some advice. One sentence, she was at the end of her rope. 
the other one. So this is how we actually can rectify the mistakes in the run on or fused sentences. Okay, now let's sum everything up. In this video, what we have been learning is a sentence, the meaning and also the mistakes that we make in sentences. A sentence is a group of words with a subject, a verb and a complete thought. A sentence has two parts, the subject and predicate. Subject and predicate can be simple or compound or in a sense one word or many words. And the main word or the main simple predicate uh, in a complete predicate is the verb. Similarly, the simple subject in a complete subject is the noun. The two major ways of errors in constructing sentences are sentence fragments and run on sentences. Sentence fragments are incomplete sentence constructions. They can be rectified by providing the necessary part, either subject, verb or the thought to complete the sentence. Whereas run on sentences are two sentences or more than two sentences fused into one. They can be rectified by either dividing them into different sentences or by using proper punctuation or conjunctions. For any queries on this or the meaning and the making of sentences, you can approach us um, the mail ID, the contact number or the blog spot. Thank you for watching.